A lot of us. I've struggled with it. I still struggle with it. I still struggle with the fact of thinking, seriously, me, God? You know the junk I've done. You know my past, and God, yet you still. But I can't fully appreciate God's love for me until I get healed from some things in my heart. Get in control of anger. Dad, you want to go to that one? Um, the power, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. <laughs> Don't hit me. Uh, the power of words. <laughs> The power of words, words, <laughs> baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the power of forgiveness. Listen, there are some of you in here, when you walk out those doors, you need to go see Drew. And it's Thursdays at 7 in the Midtown Sanctuary. You need, to go, you need to walk through some of this stuff because your past and the things that have happened to you in your past are keeping you from all the things that God has for you for your future. There was a young guy at Sub 30 uh, a long time ago, and uh, when he first started coming, he came down and he asked for a meeting with me, and I was doing some counseling with him. This young man had tried to commit suicide so many times, he was not allowed back on University of Alabama's campus because they said he was too much of a threat to himself and to the university, okay? He came to me, tells me this, and I said, dude, you need some help, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not the guy to give it to you. I'm not that's, not, my, that's not my wheelhouse. I'm not good at that, but I need to connect you with a guy named Drew King. And I'm gonna get Drew to call you. Drew called him the next day, got this guy involved in breakthrough and began to walk with this guy for the past, I guess like almost a year and a half, two years, something like that. This young man just started college back and he's going to school for ministry and to become a pastor. Listen. There are some of you in here, you need to go outside after the service and you need to talk with Drew and you need to sign up for breakthrough. The fourth and final thing the connect groups do is connect groups help comfort you. Connect groups help comfort you. Quite honestly, life is tough and there are some times in our lives where we just need some friends to comfort us. We just need some people in our lives that know what's going on enough with us to come up and to comfort us. To say, hey, I know you're going through this with your family. I know that you're going through this with your wife, your children, work, school, whatever it is. And we need some people to comfort us. But you need to be in relationship enough with people so that people know what's going on with you. No one is going to be able to comfort you. Yes, there are times where God will put you on someone's heart so they roll up to you and say, hey, man, I feel like, you know, just been thinking about you. God put you on my heart. But for the majority of the time, we need to be in relationships with people and connected to people enough so that when we're going through a hard time, people know what we're going through. If I rolled up to some of you in the lobby and started just comforting you out of nowhere, and I was like, hey, buddy, it's going to be okay, and you don't know me, you're going to be like, get away from me, you freak. What's wrong with you? But it's different if I know what's going on with you. It's different if I know what you're facing. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is Romans 12, 15. It says, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep or mourn with those that mourn. And I love it so much because it just gives us such a picture of what to do when we help comfort people. Sometimes what we need to do more than anything as Christians, besides trying to have spiritual answers for everything, sometimes what we need to do is just go sit with someone and cry with them and tell them that we love them and that we're here for them. Amen? Amen? Because here's the deal. There's not always answers for stuff. Sometimes it's just enough to go and sit with someone and say, I love you. I can't imagine what you're going through, but I'm here. And to cry with them. I'll never forget when me and my wife had our daughter Riley and we didn't think that she was going to live. Pastor Chris Brooks from our Orange Park campus, he would come and sit with me for hours at Wolfson Children's Hospital. I can't tell you one thing Chris said to me. I can't tell you one bit of wisdom. I can't even, I, I physically cannot even tell you, like remember talking. I just remember us sitting by each other and him just being there. 
and just crying with me. I remember Big John Scott, who's in Northern Ireland, our Northern Ireland campus pastor. I remember right after she was born, and Big John was at the hospital like that, and all he did was cry with me. He didn't have any answers. He didn't try to have it all worked out. And some of you, if you're honest with yourself, you just want someone to come and cry with you right now. And listen, I'm not saying that to be all weird and depressed or whatever, but it's just reality. And there's some of you in here, man, that you've got something to celebrate right now. And you want some people in your life that are going to be happy for you and celebrate with you. That happens in community. Connect groups help comfort you. Connect groups help you heal. Connect groups sharpen you and they give you a place to belong. But for some of you in here, connect groups are step two. Because step one is getting right with Jesus Christ. Step one is surrendering to what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Listen, you are able to be healed. You are able to be comforted. You are able to be all those different things because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. John 10, 10, Jesus says, I have come to give life and life more abundant. You will never live the abundant life that Christ has for you when you are not living a surrendered life to Christ. And let me tell you this, I surrendered my life to Christ almost 10 years ago now, and I have never once regretted a day of my surrendered life to Christ ever, ever. And there are some of you, and there are some of you in here that you think when you surrender your life to Christ that God or that Jesus or the Holy Spirit is going to make you this weird, pious, religious weirdo. Listen, God has made you who you are. He has given you your personality, your traits, your gifts, and your talents. He doesn't want to change who you are. He just wants to sharpen you to make you who he has already called you and planned you to be. And it starts with surrendering your life to Christ. The Bible's very clear that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Listen, there's no one in this church that has ever walked through the doors of any celebration church or any other campus that, have not, that has never needed to be saved. All of us need to be saved. Some of us are just a little further down the road, but here's the deal. Just because I'm further down the road doesn't give me the ability or the reason to look down upon you. Because the only reason I'm saved, the only reason a lot of you right now are going to give your lives to Christ in this moment is because right now in this moment, the Holy Spirit of God is drawing you back to your Savior and your Father. That's it. And there's some of you in here that God has such a plan for your life. And yes, connect groups are going to help with that. But the first thing right now is, what do you do with Jesus? The Bible says this, there is one way to the Father, and that is through the Son. And what that means is apart from Jesus Christ, when you die, you go to hell. And I know that that's not the feel-great statement of the year, but it's the truth. Think about this, and I'm going to end with this. Every other religion is based off of what you can do for God to get to heaven. Christianity is the only religion based off of what God did for you to reconcile him back to himself. So you don't have to have it all together. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it all figured out because it's not about what you do. It's about everything that Jesus Christ did on the cross. And it's a free gift and we get to accept it. And when you accept it, you begin to step into the abundant life that Christ has for you, and you get saved from hell. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and bow your heads, and I want to give a lot of you the chance to respond right now. There's some of you in here, you need to commit or recommit your life to Christ. You need to commit or recommit your life to Christ. What I'm going to do is I'm going to count to three. And if that's you, I just want you to raise your hand. That's it. You need to commit or recommit your life to Christ. One, two, three. Raise them. Their hands everywhere. Amen, 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 man, amen, amen, amen. Now for the rest of you in here, you just know you need to respond. You need to respond to Jesus in this moment. 
There's some things on your heart. There are some things that you're struggling with. There are some things that you're facing. And if you're honest with yourself, what you need more than anything else is to get into the presence of God at this altar. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do it a little bit different today. We're going to open this altar and we're going to go into a full worship song. Now listen, this is not the end of service. Do not miss what God is going to do. Do not beeline for the doors. Your cars will be there. I promise. Don't miss what God is going to do in this moment at this altar. So we're going to open this altar. And there's some of you, you need to come down here and you need to pray that God would help put you into some healthy, God-given relationships that will help mature you and train you to be more like Jesus Christ. There are some of you in here that you just need to come and you need to ask for forgiveness for some junk you've been doing. There's some of you in here that God has been really blessing you and you need to come to this altar and you need to thank God. There's some of you, man, that you're praying for a family member. You need to come to this altar and pray for that family member. There are some of you, you just need to connect with God. God in this moment. And so we're going to open this altar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask everyone in here to stand with me. Listen, don't leave. Don't rush out. We're going to open this altar. I'm going to get everyone to lift your hands with me in this place. God, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. God, we thank you that we are able to be reconciled to you because of everything that he did on the cross. God, we thank you that you are the one that designed relationships, God. You are the one that desired friendships, Lord God. God, I pray that right now, God, as we open this altar, God, as people start making their way to this altar, God, that you would begin to move, God, that you would begin to heal, that you would begin to restore, God. I pray that as people go out and they sign for up for connect groups at the end of service, God, that you would help them to enter in and to meaningful Christian relationships, Lord God, that will draw them closer to you, Lord God. Can I just get everyone to repeat after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I ask that you would forgive me of all my sins. From this moment forward, I ask that you would be the Lord of my life and I will live a life that honors and glorifies you. I pray all these things In the name of your son.